Callum here with a look at the science and history behind some of the United States' most iconic national parks. Today we're here at Carlsbad Caverns in southeastern New Mexico, home to some amazing caves. It's hard to imagine, but below us are miles of winding paths that take you through some incredible cave formations. Carlsbad Caverns was designated a national park in 1930, and ever since, people have been going down under right here in the USA. This area is full of caves, but the main attraction is Carlsbad Caverns, a fully developed site with paved paths, lights, a walkway, even an elevator if you need it. Let's take a look at cave formation. A cave or cavern is a natural void, an empty space in the ground, generally big enough for a human to enter. There are several ways caves can form. Let's take a look at a few of them. A solution cave is formed when water enters the earth through cracks in the ground. If the rock below has certain qualities, mainly pretty soft and soluble, like limestone or gypsum, the acid in the water eats away or erodes the rock, eventually leaving a cavern or cave. Primary caves, or lava tubes, form at the same time as the rock. As the lava cools, an empty tube is left, our primary cave. Glacier caves are formed when water from melted ice flows beneath the surface of the glacier, carving out a void or cavern. Erosional caves are also formed by flowing water, but can occur in hard stone like granite. When the water finds a soft spot in the rock, it wears away or erodes the rock, forming a void. Littoral or sea caves are found along coastlines and are formed when waves pound the rock at a weak point or fault. The power behind the constant hammering of the waves breaks into the earth, forming a cavern. As you may have noticed, water plays a key role in cave formation. And while it may look like we're in the middle of the desert, the caves here at Carlsbad were formed by the waters of an ancient sea. How do gases and water mix to form caves? If you don't know, Ask. That's right, going back to the lab. We reached out to Dr. Victor Pollock at the University of New Mexico, a speleologist who can tell us how Carlsbad Caverns was formed. He was kind enough to help us tell our Sparks Adventure story. We've covered some basics on cave formation. Can you tell us more about the process at Carlsbad Caverns? Most caves around the world, it's been estimated maybe 90% of limestone caves around the world formed by dissolution of limestone from carbonic acid. And the carbonic acid for those caves comes from rainwater in the soil from above. This process of cave formation is called cave genesis or speleogenesis. Carlsbad Cavern is different. It forms from ingredients that came from below the cave. And this is referred to as hypogene speleogenesis. From below the cave, the ingredients are hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. And those gases migrate upward into the groundwater and mix with the water to form sulfuric acid. So what's unusual about Carlsbad Caverns is that it formed from sulfuric acid. So only about 10% of the caves form that way around the world. Hydrogen sulfide plus the oxygen in the water forms sulfuric acid. Mix that in with the limestone layer below the earth and you get the perfect recipe for cave formation. About how long did it take for Carlsbad Caverns to form? One of the, the very beneficial things about hypogene speleogenesis is that when the caves form, they leave byproducts. When you dissolve limestone from sulfuric acid, you produce a lot of gypsum. And you'll see this in the big room when you go visit the big room in Carlsbad Cavern, you'll see these big blocks of gypsum. And you, you can think of that as the byproduct of the formation of the cave itself. But this other mineral, uh, it's called alunite, it's a very stable mineral, and it can be dated because it has potassium in it. Potassium is an important element when you want to find out how old something is. 
The potassium in these caves here was dated using potassium argon dating, or KAR, a scientific way to date rock, and gives us the information necessary to date these caves. And because we could do that, we could determine when Carlsbad Caverns formed. From those dates that we got, we could say that Carlsbad Cavern formed between seven and three million years ago. Now, it probably formed during episodic pulses of these gases into the groundwater. Aside from the large caverns, there are crazy rock formations. How did those get there? So these are the uh, stalagmites and the stalactites and the flowstone and a bunch of eccentric looking uh, formations in the cave. They're very beautiful. That's what gives Carlsbad Caverns its beauty. But when Carlsbad Cavern formed an entrance, when you had a collapse somewhere that formed a big entrance, that allowed the atmosphere outside to mix with the atmosphere in the cave, reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the cave, which allowed uh, for the stalactites and stalagmites to start growing. So the, those formations, dripstones and flowstones, formed long after the actual cave itself formed. The opening of this cave entrance allowed oxygen to fill the cavern. When groundwater carrying calcite drips through the ceiling of the cavern and it reacts with the oxygen in the air, it turns back into a solid as calcium carbonate. This calcite begins to gather, forming these beautiful stalactites. Where you'll see stalactite, you'll usually find slagmite. These form the same way, water drops leaving calcite deposits on the ground. This calcite eventually forms a mound. These stalactites and stalagmites can grow together to form a solid column. You can remember which is which by noting that slagmites have a G for the ground and stalactites have a T for top. And finally, a question we ask all our contributors. What would an expert like you want a kid like me to know about caves? We like to visit Carlsbad Cavern and other caves because they are wonderful different worlds. They are very different than our surface world. That fascinates us. But the one thing that is that sets caves apart is that they are scientific treasures. They're delicate, special environments. They need protection. In caving, we have a motto, a saying, take only pictures, leave only footsteps, and kill nothing but time. There's so much to know about caves, how they create a habitat for bats and other creatures, the history of ancient peoples, even climate and geological history. Caves teach us so much about our world. Pretty amazing stuff. The US National Park System rocks. Go to sparksadventure.com and follow along with us as we explore the beauty and science of the most spectacular sites on Earth. Imagine living at light speed Imagine all the things we'd see I can't imagine those mind-gasmic galaxies Imagine finding a new home